Welcome to Five Spice, a program for simulating analog circuits. In this video, I'll go through some basics of using Five Spice with the assumption you're already familiar with schematic drawing programs. To get started, let's load a demo schematic. So we come up to the File menu, and you see there's a special entry for the demo schematics, so we click on that. Here are the list of them, and Demo 1 is the most generally useful one for beginners. So we'll load Demo 1, and I'm just going to delete these notes so we're not confused. So let's start with drawing. The quick once over is that the schematic symbols are located in this toolbar on the right. So you roll the mouse along till you get what you want. So let's say we want to add a capacitor. So we click on the capacitor, then we left click to place it in the schematic, and we right click to stop adding capacitors. Now we need to wire the capacitor into the circuit. So back over here and we look at the pencil. Well, lines are not electrically connective, so we need a wire. Click on the wire and notice the cursor changes to the pencil. Click there, click there, and that end is wired. But there's a quicker way to do wiring. On your keyboard, hold down the control key. That's the CTRL key. And notice we've got the same pencil. And if we click here and click and click here, we're done. It's wired. So now let's go back to the capacitor. And how do we edit the part value? Well, to edit something in 5 Spice in the schematic, you double click it. And this brings up the dialog. So let's say right now it's 10 nanofarads. So let's put in one nanofarad. Now notice there are some special parts in the circuit. This is an amplifier, and over here on the input, this symbol, which is drawn as a battery, is a fixed DC source. This symbol here is a variable source, called a signal source in 5 spice. And you can think of this symbol as being like a function generator in the lab. Some SPICE programs combine these two, but in 5 SPICE the DC biases are separate from the input waveform. The other half is to go and look at the amplifier's output. Here we need to tell the program which circuit points we want to see data from, and we do this with the test point symbol here. You wire test points to all the points in the circuit where you want data to appear in a graph or table. Test points start with TP, and there are several different types. This is the basic voltage test point. Notice that the test point and the signal source are drawn in green. They are not part of your physical circuit, but they are part of your simulation schematic. Now suppose we want to run an analysis or a simulation, whichever word you prefer. We go up here to Analyze, and we click on Select and Edit. And this brings up the Analysis dialog. This area here is where we select the particular analysis that we want to run. So let's select DC Bias. It's always good to start with DC Bias. It makes debugging errors much easier. And note that with DC Bias there's no further setup that we need to do. So we can drop down to here to the Apply Settings and Run button, which will run the simulation and we get here an informational message that to see the actual bias voltages we can put the mouse over a wire so we can see 1.2 volts there and on the output we can see 2.4 volts those of you who know op amps know this is a gain of two circuits the DC biases also appear in this page up here by clicking on this tab so you see both the node voltages, and here you also see currents through the voltage sources. And one thing in 5 Spice is that if we edit the schematic, even just moving it, the node voltages become invalid because the program doesn't really know for sure. So you'll see that NA, node bias voltage equals NA, and we would need to rerun the simulation, which we can do by clicking this button here and that would restore valid node voltages. 
Now let's do something more interesting. We'll go back up to the analysis dialog again here. And let's select an AC analysis. Now here we would need to enter some numbers. They've already been entered. So the analysis AC occurs over a frequency range. So that would be from 10 kilohertz to 10 megahertz. And we generally would enter 10 steps per decade. And AC is usually run with a log frequency scale. So we just leave that this as it is. And we don't pay any attention to this at the moment. The other thing, though, we have to do to get results is we need to set up a graph. Now, the axes can auto scale themselves. And normally, both of these would be checked. Both boxes would be checked. But I've preset up the vertical axis. So the thing we really have to pay attention to and do something with here are the plots. So notice here we have TPV1. This is the name of that test point that we have in our schematic. And when you look at the drop down menu, uh, all of the test points that you had added to the schematic would appear in this list. Uh, these three are equations, and we're not going to talk about them in this beginning video. Once you've selected a test point, you have to decide on which axis to display it. So in this case, we chose the left axis. Here's the setup for the left vertical axis here. And I've entered 8 for the max and minus 4 for the min. But the really important part is, what are we going to display? So we're displaying the magnitude of the AC signal. And we have the dB checkbox checked. And these are the default settings. So coming back up, notice there's up to four plots available. And we've set up another plot here with the same test point. And this one, we're going to scale against the right vertical axis. Here's the right vertical axis. And so that's going to display phase. So legends, titles are all entered in. We come down here, apply the settings, and run the analysis. And there we are. Now in the graph, we have two cursors. You can move them by clicking on this handle and sliding them back and forth here. Uh, notice the crosshair is down on this plot, which is the solid line. Here's our TPV1, which is being shown on the left axis, magnitude dB, like we'd set it up. If we want to switch the cursors to the phase setting, we would click here. And you can see that that symbol jumped. And now you can see the crosshairs have moved to the phase display. And phase is over here. And of course, as we move the crosshairs, this readout over here changes. Now, to adjust the graph settings, you can double click on the graph, which will bring up a form for rescaling the vertical and horizontal axes. You can also right mouse click on the graph and get a pop-up menu, which allows some further options. The final important part is the graph's lock button. Right now, if we run another simulation, the results of that simulation will overwrite the graph we're looking at right now. So if we want to save this graph, we click on the locked button. Now if I hit uh, the function key F9, that will rerun the simulation. And you can see two graphs which are identical. It's the same simulation, but the cursors are different. The new graph has the cursors in the default position. And if we want to get rid of that graph, we can right click on the tab and just get rid of it. So that's what I wanted to show you. And thank you for watching.